Hi de ho, everybody. It's the Mr. Obvious Show. I'm your host, Mr. Obvious. I'm here to help. Let's go right to the phone. Hello, this is Mr. Obvious. Uh, hello, Mr. Obvious. <laughs> Speaking. Uh, hi, Mr. Obvious. Uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. I I got a little situation I uh, thought, thought you might be able to help me out with. I promise to do my very best. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not what you might call an avid fisherman, but uh, uh, this past weekend I was, I was lucky enough to land a 16-pound rainbow trout. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. She sounds like a beauty. Oh, she sure is, Mr. Obvious. She is. Uh, that, that, that's kind of my problem. Uh, you see, I, I never caught a fish like this before, and uh, i got to admit, it, it was a real thrill. And um, well, it stirred some kind of dark yearnings within me, you know? And after feeling her thrash around like she did, and, mm-hmm. and seeing the sun shimmering off her beautiful body, I, yes. well, I, I found myself wanting this fish, and not not just for dinner, if you know what I mean. Oh, I sure do, caller. Oh this God. isn't a fish for the dinner table. This is a trophy fish. Yeah. A trophy Have you fish. thought about mounting it? Oh hell yeah, Mister Obvious. <laughs> it's all I think about. Sometimes I, I lie there in bed at night, tossing and turning, yeah. fighting back the urge to sneak downstairs and take that fish out of the freezer and just mount it right there. Well, what's uh, stopping you? <laughs> well, I, I guess I, I fear becoming, you know, kind of an outcast. You know, I, I don't want to be shunned by my friends and family for committing such a weird, unnatural act. Wow, well, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Caller, many prominent and respected men mount the fish that they catch. Ernest Hemingway, <laughs> Gary Cooper, Ted Nugent, just to name a few. Well, I've seen a fish mounted by the pastor of my church. Whoa, you actually saw that? Why, sure, right there in his office. Oh, it was a beautiful thing. And it was perfectly natural. <laughs> so, uh, how did it make you feel? Oh, well, you know, excited, jealous, many different emotions. Uh, made me wish I had a fish of my own to mount. I, I say this to you now, caller, and I believe it. A well-mounted fish will provide a lifetime's worth of memories. It's a special thing between a man and his fish. Man, I, I had no idea you were so open-minded and forward-thinking, Mr. Hopkins. I mean, I, I just wish my wife felt like you did. You, you think your wife would object to you mounting this fish? pretty sure she would. Well, why don't you just sit her down and explain the feelings you're having, the almost obsessive urge you have to mount this fish? <laughs> Surely your wife would support you then. I, I don't know. I, I kind of think it might be better if I just kept my wife out of the loop on this one, <laughs> at least uh, at first. Seeing how upset she got over the goat and all. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you mounted a goat? Hey, look, I thought the goat was choking, all right? I, I was giving him the Heimlich, and then my, my pants fell down, and... Well, that's beside the point. <laughs> You've inspired me, Miss Travius. I, I'm going to go ahead and mount this fish. Heck with what society thinks. Oh, uh... Caller? Uh, yeah. Can, can I call you caller? Oh, sure. We may be talking about two different things here. When I say mount the fish, uh, what I mean is... Oh, I haven't felt this free in years, no, Mr. No. Wait, wait a minute, caller. I'm not encouraging some kind of sick... Uh, oh, you've really opened my eyes, Mr. I think we probably need to talk about this some more. Mr. Obvious, you, you're a lifesaver. Caller? Uh-huh. Caller? Caller? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> For the love of God, caller, don't do this thing. Hello? Uh, well, I can tell by the music we're out of time. <laughs> show. I need a vacation. <laughs> oh, my God.